Let's talk about curtain walls, because curtain walls are really a different sort of beast. And really what they are is the kind of a combination of a wall and a window. So whenever you have giant sheets of glass with mullions in it, that's a curtain wall. And the ba way we basically talk about it, this whole thing's called a curtain wall or a curtain system. These guys are called panels. The panels can be glazed or solid or have any material you want to. They're gridded, so we have grid lines that divide up the sheets of glass. And then we also have these things called mullions, which are the uh, like aluminum or steel pieces that are in there, providing a little bit of structural support. So just thinking ahead to what we're doing with them, though, we tend to use them to capture views and light whenever we want sort of a very dramatic, a well-lighted space. But watch out for this fact that they tend not to be load-bearing. So often, if you have a big curtain wall, you have to think about where the structural elements are going to be near it to go ahead and carry the load that that wall isn't carrying. OK, in terms of working with curtain walls, let's just kind of take a look at how you create them and talk about sort of two main types. We can create new curtain walls just by choosing them. We choose to take an existing wall and just change it into a curtain wall. It's really just a wall type. And there's two types of curtain walls I want you to think about. There's some which I'll call type-defined curtain walls, where the pattern is defined numerically. We can say, make it every three feet by every five feet. We just you know, formulaically say what the pattern should be. And there's another type where we actually customize the curtain system where we can actually create a very individual pattern for exactly what we want. Okay, so let's see if we can get through those three things and then let you go today. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'll zoom on out. Let's put a new wall in there. Back to level one. Okay, and for this curtain wall, I can choose to draw a curtain wall, or I can choose, there you go, they're down at the bottom here. Or I can choose, change another type into a curtain wall, it doesn't really matter. In this menu, there's two types of curtain walls which are already defined, exterior glazing and storefront, which already have a pattern to them. There's one called curtain wall, which is just a big old sheet of glass waiting for you to subdivide. Okay, Let's try, oh, exterior glazing as a starting point. And that'll be one that has a pattern to it. We'll look at it, and then we'll go back and look at how we can customize something. Let me look at it in 3D. Not very much to it. Let me take that one out so you see it a little bit better. Here's a curtain wall. It's all showing up. You can sort of see that, what does this one have? It doesn't look like anything has mullions to it. It has a pattern to it. We have some sort of spacing between the different glass panels. Okay. Each of these different sort of panels are selectable. There's grid lines between them. There's panels. That's an individual panel. I can tab to try and select those. But let's talk about how this is defined. And it's really, these are what I'll call type-defined curtain panels. So let's go ahead and choose it. And I can choose the type properties. And let's see what it says. For exterior glazing, which is one type, and you can create as many different types for as many different patterns as you want, it's currently defined as six foot wide with a vertical grid pattern and 12 feet tall as the horizontal pattern. So if I want to change to a different type, no worries. I can make those five feet by eight feet. Say apply. And see it changing in the background there. I can make them nine feet tall and apply it. I can make it uh, yeah, 15 feet tall for the entire size of it. Let's make it back to eight so you can sort of see better. In this formulaically defined curtain panel, you also have the notion of whether or not there should be any mullions. Right now, you'll see there's no mullions defined for it. This is all just kind of sheets of glass with no steel between them, no aluminum. If I wanted to go through and change some, put in some mullions, I could come down here and choose a mullion type. And let me just choose one of these rectangular mullions. Say apply it. And you'll see it'll start putting in some of those elements. So we can put them in horizontally. We can put them in vertically. So you know, this formulaically defined type of curtain panel is actually a very good thing to work with. For a lot of big buildings where you don't want to go through and grid it up individually, you know, these formulaically type defined grid panel systems are really the way to go. Yeah, we can customize them a little bit in terms of their spacing. We can sort of play around with the layout a little bit. There's a lot of things we can do in terms of rotating the grid or kind of offsetting the grid and figuring out whether it's going to be centered or left justified or right justified. But we can play with the pattern. And it's really a very nice way to kind of get big things done quickly. 
Let me distinguish that, though, from something we'll call a custom curtain panel instead. Okay, and let's draw one of those just for contrast. I'll take uh, another go to a wall. And I'm going to, instead of doing the curtain wall exterior glazing, one of the type defined ones, I'm going to just say curtain wall one. And let's just draw a wall out here next door. Let me go back to 3D. Now this one you'll see is like a giant sheet of glass. It's just kind of hanging out there waiting for us. And giant sheets of glass are kind of nice. If you're Steve Jobs, you like the idea of giant sheets of glass that will be curving ever so slightly around a mile long kind of campus. But it's a very expensive thing to do. So giant sheets of glass are not like, uh, you know, your, your construction folks will tell you that's not a great way to go. But when, what's that? No. There you go. So, yes, that might be a little expensive and hard to carry on out there. So what we'll do is, for this giant sheet of glass, that's a starting point. But what we want to do is start gridding it up. We want to start dividing it into horizontal and vertical grids. So you can kind of customize the pattern to be exactly what you want. And how that looks is as follows. We got the giant sheet of glass. That part's good. There's a tool here called the curtain grid tool. And the curtain grid tool lets you customize these things. So what you can do is, with the giant sheet of glass hanging out there, Hover over the left or the edge on the up and down edge or the vertical edge, either one of those, and you can drop grid panels in there. It'll actually snap to what it considers to be the halfway point, the third point, things that are probably kind of points you want to consider. So maybe I'll put a grid there and I'll put a grid there. I can put a grid here and a grid there. Okay. But I'm starting to have a pattern which is a little bit custom. It's not completely regular but I can start to really control and have a very specific pattern to it. Okay. I could even do things like, see this grid line in here? I can select the grid line. And oh, where did the modify go? There it is, add or remove segments. I can go through and choose to actually just remove a piece of that. And when I do, just that one piece of it goes away. So I can start getting a lot of very detailed control over exactly what I want to have happening. And if you want to do, oh, like the Eames House in Southern California, or just anything that has kind of, oh, a Mondrian sort of thing to it, where you have a very kind of funny pattern, and you want to start changing out panels and having a very interesting grid that's not sort of regularly defined, you can define it this way. Okay. So last things here for you, just two last little caveats. Once you have this thing, and don't worry, we'll sort of have more chance to play with this and sort of experiment in terms of doing that. We can add mullions to that. That's typically the last thing we do. We do that by choosing the mullion tool. And then we can choose, do you want to put it on all the grid lines or just a specific segment? I'll just choose all to make it really quick. Okay, and now I have a lot of uh, kind of framing to kind of carry over the entire panel right here. And then the one last thing we're going to show you before we let you go today is really the whole notion of these grids or these curtain walls and what happens relative to a curved wall. Okay, because this is, again, one of those ones that always gets you. So let's talk about that. Here's the notion. I'm going to go through and create a wall. And uh, we all like to play with curved walls because we're getting started and it sounds like a fun thing to do. So let me go to just like a wood siding wall. I'll make some nice little arced wall. Okay, and that's a nice little curving segment wall. I'll go back to 3D. Okay, so there we are. We're looking at our little curved wall. So far, so good. Okay, if I want to change that into a curtain wall, I want to have a nice grounded curtain wall. I can choose the wall. And then I can change the type to be a curtain panel. Now, if you choose one of the existing types, like exterior glazing or storefront, it'll do a pretty good job because that wall is already divided up into grids for you. If you choose just curtain wall one, this happens to you. Okay, it's straightened out. You'll see, though, it actually has, see these little dashed lines? 
it's telling you, you know, I want to be a curved wall, but I just can't be a curved wall as a single piece of glass is what it's telling you right now. Okay, so what do you got to do? Okay, as a single piece, it can't curve, although it does know that's the curve you want. What you got to do to allow it to make the curve is just put some grids in. As soon as you put some grids in, it'll follow that curve. So for example, if I say curtain grid and start to break up the wall, you'll see it'll start forming panels. And the more grids you put in, the finer it can go through and simulate the curve. Okay, so just watch out for that. Again, don't worry if that went by really quick today. That's one of those ones as you're playing with your different things, you're gonna do this thing where you put a curtain wall in there, it's trying to be curved and it's just not doing it for you. And the issue is gonna be single pieces can't, you just have to break it up into grids. Okay, so let's go ahead and break there for today out of respect for your time. And when we resume on Thursday, we'll kind of uh, pick up the, kind of some more nuance on some of the curtain wall stuff. But we're going to be looking at floors and stairs and openings between things, kind of looking at the horizontal surfaces too. But hopefully, this will be enough for you to get going with your design project and uh, just thinking about how you want that building envelope and the surfaces to look so you can get going on your designs. <laughs>